This is Mark Baer. You're watching Conversations and Collaborations. Today, I'm with a very old, dear friend, Tom Anderton from Roanoke, Virginia. But we're going to talk about kind of how we met, when we met, where we met, how we were at uh, that ripe young age. So welcome. So how we met. <laughs> uh, as usual, it's a great story. Um, my girlfriend and I, who is now my wife, uh, were, were, had, a lo had a lot of wanderlust in our early years, our college years. We liked to travel a lot. Um, we took off for a, a week or so to Jamaica. And on our very first day there, uh, we ran across a young fellow walking up the beach who looked like he, he had measles. <laughs> the sand fleas had had their way with him. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, Mosquitoes. had had their way with him, and he, was just, he, he looked like it was a plague coming up the beach. So my mother, uh, my, my, my girlfriend's motherly instinct took over, <laughs> and, uh, and we introduced herself to Mark, and we kind of nursed him back to health a little bit over a couple of days, and uh, finished out our, our, our uh, uh, wondering uh, experience in Jamaica, and he followed us home. Yeah, we went to Miami. Went to Miami, and then uh, back up uh, through the Carolinas and Georgia, yeah. and and back up to Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, where where I s yeah. stayed and and the party continued. And I started in, uh, uh, I just dr drove off and and uh, started in New Orleans. Yeah. And and then ended up uh, decided for some reason to go to Jamaica. Yeah. Ended up with, uh, you know, these are old hippie days. And ended up in a place called the Blue Mountains, up in the mountains with. Uh, Wild Rasta with uh, and a and a bag of weed, yep. about a pound of weed, right? And Wild Rasta's guys, and we slept out in this thing, and I was all thing. I think I probably landed with twenty bucks. So I don't know where. Well, I think I was down to my last red stripe when I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the red stripes were only ten cents back then. Yeah, was, fortunately, that was so. a beautiful. Thing. So a dollar would take you a long and, way. And it was it, it was. Um, you know, Jamaica was beautiful. Yeah. Your wife was really beautiful. You you were okay, but your wife was really beautiful. <laughs> She's the hook. She yeah, is. she was. She was the hook of the story. You, you uh, say you had twenty dollars, Mark. That was twenty more than we had because if you'll remember oh, that's correctly, right. we didn't have enough money to go home. <laughs> I didn't have enough money to get my car out of the parking lot at the Miami airport. So I think we bummed eight bucks from you. And, and then we spent the night in the we we how we got in in Miami. If I'm not mistaken. We met a guy who gave us his room. Yes, and he was on his way to Nepal to climb. To climb, and he right. was a doctor from Washington State. Kind of another weird adventure. He was, he was the doctor member on the expedition. Um, he, he he had taken a room at the airport to to rest a little bit before his flight, and uh, of course we were broke, and uh, he he gave this room to us. And then, uh, so then we go to uh, we go to Richmond, and you're living in the Fan District, correct? And yeah. you had this great house. It was a, it was a Civil War house. It, it was a it was an antebellum period house. Yeah, it was great. It had something like twelve bedrooms in it, and and as many fireplaces, a yeah. couple kitchens. Great so, old house. So it was a very uh, it was just a you know just an, a fabulous adventure. Yeah. And uh, you and I hooked up because uh, I, I believe you'd gone to England for school at the time. You know, we were, we were, we were, we were just kind of, as we talked before this, we were both probably 20, 21 years old. Right. Uh, probably about 20 years old. I'd say so. Yeah, and uh, very intoxicated by Hemingway. We were both reading Hemingway. We were both reading, uh, you know, I was uh, I was somewhere between Kerouac and Hemingway. Yeah. And, uh, so, Somewhere between Kerak Hemingway and Henry Miller. You know, I was at, chasing, at that point. I was chasing the Hemingway dream. And, uh, and, at the and time. so we were kind of already into this, you know. And I don't know if kids today still have are as romantic about this. I don't know what they read or what they're. Yeah. But we were very romantic characters of this thing. Well, I studied uh, English literature uh, at yeah. Oxford. As you yeah, you went to Oxford. Reference to it before, and uh, I had just gotten back and and and. Uh, like I said, the the wonderlust was the was the first thing that that attracted us to each other. I believe. Yeah. 
uh, and and the and the romance uh, of the literature at the time. Yeah, because we we were able to you know with the adventures we were having, they were right. really great adventures, and it it, it looked. There's there's something about a romantic yeah. vision that yeah. I don't know of if it was of our time or of just because we studied the, this literature, but we were really you know my 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 thing in life, my search in life was always Jake Barnes' fishing trip, right? And how right, we put right. those fish away and how we packed the fish in his bag. Exactly. And the sun also exactly. rises. Exactly. You know, those were kind of that's that was how we. Yeah saw ourselves and how we looked at the world at that Well, if you'll remember time. correctly, after we were back in Richmond for a few months, uh, we were we were again broke, yeah. as usual, yeah. and we took a job at the cattle farm. Remember building fences? Oh, God, we did that. Yeah, in Natural Bridge, we Virginia. We actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow. And, and, and camped out next to, to a mountain swimming hole yeah. that was 20 degrees below zero when you stuck your toe in it, you know. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, I believe we called it the Cowabunga Hole. Yeah, yeah. It's just a reference back to the surfing days. And yeah, stuff. and 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 it was a, you know, you know, I I kept uh, I've always asked Tani, you know, why aren't you running for governor? You know, because he, because <laughs> he's this man's a natural politician, and then I remember back to our youth and I remember back to what a rough scene it was. Yeah, it was the witness protection program. <laughs> yeah, and I go, no, we don't want you, we don't want them digging too right, much. Right, right, right. <laughs> we, you, yeah. know, you know, so it was, you know. Yeah. And I wound up on the wrong side of the political fence also, so. You yeah, know. yeah, but you. But that's what keeps but, us uh, but that's fresh. On, that, that's, that's in the South, so yeah, it's. That's uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a Southern thing. It's a Southern thing. At, at which I know, so so I lost you for a bunch of years. A bunch of years. I, I think it was close to thirty or so. Yeah, I lost him, and then we were living in. Um, I was living in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, right. and I go, you know, I could pick up the phone, and then I could call four one one, and I could ask, mm -hmm. and then I could pick up the phone again, and I could dial, right. <laughs> which I did. And then I found you, and I went yeah, and found you, the phone, right. and now, uh, and then it's been love ever since. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and and here we are. This week is uh, uh, Car Week in Pebble Beach. Right. Let, let's before we uh, let's just, just explain a little bit about what's going to happen this week with you. I've got a car uh, at auction go, going up for sale at auction uh, Sunday night after the concourse uh, at Gooding and Company uh, at the Equestrian Center at Pebble Beach. Um, normally, we've bought cars out to show them, and to uh, and just the camaraderie of the of the car community. Uh, this year, I decided to bring one out to to sell it, to test the waters, and get some of this maybe West Coast money back to Virginia. Yeah. Instead of the other way around. <laughs> so uh, that's what's going and, and on. Ex explain what the car is, and then we'll go on. It's a it's a 1960 Mercedes Benz uh, Cabriolet uh, convertible. Uh, it's a 220 SE. It's one of the first fuel-injected Mercedes um, ever built, and it's. Uh, it, it, we're hoping it'll do very well. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Knock on wood. Well, yeah. let me ask you this, Mark. Okay. Uh, we did lose each other for 30 years. Yeah. We 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 shared again a great wanderlust when we met each other. We were both you know uh, there for pretty much the same reason. 30 years later, you shared your art and your work with me. Tell me where you have come since then. When I when that, that was six years ago, I believe we were just getting into party at Smarties, if I'm not okay. mistaken. I like going back to these where we started with these original impulses. Okay. You know, and then uh, the uh, you know we did have this romantic thing. I you know, and and I don't know. I don't think kids travel and people. You know, we I went to God. I I went everywhere. I was. Thailand. I was in Africa. I was, uh, I was the first. Uh, I, re I remember being in Uganda when, yeah. when it, it, it's two hippies and CIA guys sitting around the <laughs> lobby with Idi Amin was still president. Yeah, you right. know. So uh, we, Idi Amin Dada. Yeah, Idi Amin Dada. Yeah. And and then I became a Dada surrealist <laughs> later on. You know, so, uh, but we 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 did this, and this was generationally. You know, this is what we we did, and we, you know, we. I don't know if I would dare these things. You know, I remember uh, a, a beautiful place like uh, Mombasa mm -hmm. off of the coast of Kenya. Right. You know, now it, it's it's a very heavy. I'd get 
kidnapped and, t and taken yeah. off the street there now. The culture's not the same, obviously. So uh, I, I, we hit a... We hit a pocket of, of, of time and space. You know, we were mm -hmm. we, we were lucky in our at the age we are. We were lucky in uh, you know it was post World War II. It was mm -hmm. uh, we, we were we were lucky guys. We were you know it, just uh, a lucky generation in right. in, 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 a, in a way. And um, then I uh, you know I ended up spending I don't, almost twenty five years in Hollywood doing uh, right. this and that and various careers and. At that ended, uh, you know, uh, you know, and I had a certain aesthetic. You know, when it was a choice, it, it, I, I was always arty. I started as a poet, yeah. you know, and uh, I, I studied at, at Boulder, and I had, uh, you know, Ginsburg was around, mm -hmm. uh, uh, William Burroughs was around, and Gary Snyder was around, and uh, my my first. Uh, a serious aesthetic, being around serious artists, was was in Boulder, and they were they were serious. It wasn't, and I, I don't know. I had a the, I, I remember the the cover of Rolling Stone magazine when Werner Herzog was on mm -hmm. the cover, right? You know, and of, of 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 my generation, everybody wanted to be Werner Herzog because he was making those outrageous yeah. movies, and it was at that time that that was the the thing. And I I had a partner. By the name of uh, Marco Kane, who uh, who had a career for many years because he became a, a steady cam operator, and he's, he's still working. Great guy. So the two of us in Denver, uh, with our Rolling Stone magazine, a picture of Werner Herzog, trying to figure out how do we get out of there, uh -huh. you know. And so it was. Then we went to, you know, then you know, yeah. Mark and I both went to Hollywood, and we re 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 reparted at that time, and we made a film together in, in Denver that won a Student Academy Award, and that's how we got out of Colorado. And then, uh, you know, he had his career, and then I went my way. But it was nothing. Hollywood was very different than the than the the poetry community and the art community. And I think I wondered what would happen if I went to New York instead. You know, I always wondered that. And then, you know, kind of Hollywood ended because um, I kind of, it, you know, I got tired of writing movies that I could sell, uh -huh. but never got made. You know, it's like being an architect, your building still can get made. At a certain point, right. it's uh, frustrating. Yeah, at a certain point, it was frustrating. And I, you know, I had the, exp you know, you know, at a certain point in, in Los Angeles, um, the party looks the same, the people look the same, the conversation seems the same, and it just doesn't, it's not new anymore. Yeah. Uh, and you fall out of love. You, 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 have, you, have to, you have to be in love with your city. You know, it's like I've never fallen out of love with New York, but I, right. I certainly fell out of love with Los Angeles. And, um, and at a certain point in the, as the beginning of the third act, you know, so that was, you know, that, that big space between was the second act. And, and the beginning of the first act, uh, you know, was with that, that poetry. And at the beginning of the third act, I wanted to get back to that route, you know, where... It, it really, it really mattered to me. Uh, the work really mattered. The words really mattered. It was a very, uh, but there was no, you know, there was no value to it. Right. You know, that doesn't. It wasn't necessarily a product. It was right. uh, more of a something that was more sacred to it. And that started kind of in North Carolina. All right. And that's uh, started making video art and doing stuff that I could make by hand. And, and always rough, and uh, you know the, the the production and the all that never mattered. It was just going after something directly and doing it roughly and using these new technologies to mm -hmm. to get it out and get it and uh, not really worried about an audience very much. Although that would be a nice thing, but that's been what's happened in the last several years. I'm Mark Bear. This is uh, conversations and collaborations. I'm going to take a short break. You are watching Conversations and Collaborations. For all episodes, go to markdavidbear.com. Hello, this is Mark Bear. I'm talking with my friend Tom Anderton. I wanted to talk about art, but I want to talk about balloon racing first. <laughs> all right, balloon racing it is. Yeah, let's, let's just talk about that, and then we'll get into art. <laughs> well, I had raced, I had come to the point in my life where I had raced uh, 
automobiles, I'd raced motorcycles, I had raced boats, and there was one thing left that I hadn't raced, and that was hot air balloons. So a friend of mine took me for a ride once, and I was hooked, went out and wrote a bad check the next day for a balloon, ordered one, and somehow got it covered by the time the balloon was delivered, and uh, I raced internationally for a couple of years. Did one of the first flights from uh, Texas, international flights from Texas into Mexico. Um, as a guest of the president of Mexico, hosted a fine party for us. Uh, I flew the Olympics in Alberta. I uh, flew for CBS Sports at the Masters Golf Tournament. Uh, got arrested at that time, but that's a different story, a different day. Uh, that brought me around to when we reconnected right. shortly after that. And uh, that's when I started following, following your art and what you were doing up to that time. And, uh, and you had led me gently into, the, into your world uh, of the collaboration with yourself on poetry, on, on artwork, on painting, uh, the narrative of the story, and putting it all together, uh, bringing us to your new project. And I'm going to let you uh, tell us all what that's about. I've been eclectic, to say the least, and iconoclastic. And, I, and my own drummer, and it's probably Pete Best, the guy that didn't get in the Beatles, it wasn't Ringo, right, right, the right. guy that didn't quite keep beat. Yeah. Uh, but my search has been for the form that allowed me to be me in the easiest way. I'm looking for the, the way the water rolls down the, the hill. Right you know, in the easiest direction, looking for the easiest way to express myself with the least amount of artifice. And that's led me to, uh, and, and to use everything that's available to me, whether I have any proficiency at it or not. Right. So I can write pretty well. I can't dance very well. My painting is very suspect. Uh, and some of the other things I do are pretty suspect. But that's not the point. The point is to say what I want to say and express the thoughts that I'm, you know, trying to think of at the core right. of, you know, who I am or how I think. And um, it's very uh, self-oriented, I guess, or inward-oriented. But I, I'm kind of very Walt Whitman-y in that, right. you know, you know, what's in me is in you. I'm looking for it where the I meets the we. You know, I figure, and being a flawed character of some kind of dubious, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, morality or what, uh, I, and I sometimes think I'm not even the worst. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? no, not and at I, all. And, and I know what's running through my head, and I'm thinking, you know, that's probably... I'm not alone. I'm not the worst. So I figure if I'm just honest with me, I'm getting, you know, something that will resonate with somebody else. So that's it, it that's reaches my me. That's my approach in. It reaches me. And uh, in in the recent years, I, I had this um, again epiphany going through uh, um, Tom Bradley Airport in Los Angeles, seeing the video art on the wall, mm -hmm. and I had an. You know, shortly after, a few years after we met, I started making movies and went to film school and did th this thing. And, I, and I, I just fell in love. I, I just wanted to make movies. And, and, and I did against all odds. You know, we just, I just did this thing. That was my calling. And I hadn't had that feeling again. So I'm walking through the airport and I see these multiple screens, you know, in a public place with this crazy video art. And, and much of it advertising, uh, you know, 90, yeah, all, almost all of it advertising, selling you something. So mm -hmm. great production value because the money is in advertising. Uh, and I, I, I saw this and I thought, wow, I could use this as a storytelling tool, uh, you know, working on multiple screens because, you know, when, when you, you know, the, the kind of video art I was making, I'd, I'd have to stick these images on top of each other to, to just cram it all into the space. Right. And I thought, wow, if I have more screens, I can use, I can tell more of the story, right. and I can spread the story around. Mm 
And I started writing in a way that used, it's, it's not poetry, but it's poetic language. Uh, and it's, there is a beginning, middle, and an end, but it's not quite a story that you have to sit through like a movie because I wanted to create something that, uh, that could live in a public space that an observer could walk through for five minutes, that's a long observer, or 30 seconds, or however one long p t pays attention in a public space or a museum or in a gallery, uh, to have an experience, not have to take in the whole thing. You can watch, you know, if you're, if you're interested, you can go back online and watch the whole narration or mm -hmm. whatever, but that's not how people tend to view art in a public space. And this fascinated me, and over the last few years, uh, so I, I was searching for a way in to this, and I became intrigued with uh, the birth of modernism, mm -hmm. uh, Picasso, the Ballet Russe, and there was just this explosion. So I was looking for what, what my goal is, besides telling what's going on in me, it's what's going on around me. And it's not as simple as saying, you know, look at our politics, look at this, look at that, look at world events, because those things move very quickly. And, you know, if, I, if we talk about something today, yeah, by the tomorrow. time people watch this, it's, it's, you know, who knows. But there's greater things, you know, just trying to channel. And so who's my muses for this? And so I, I went back to this one time and I looked at, you know, Stravinsky. I looked at Picasso. I looked at uh, 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 Degelev. I looked at Nijinsky. I looked at this radical stuff that was causing riots and used them as my muses and used that discussion to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be retro, I'm not trying to be nostalgic, I'm not a nostalgic person. I'm looking for a way to say what's happening now, but in a language that rhymes with then, and using them as, as, as guideposts. So that's been the, the journey. But the other part of it that's been, um, you know, astonishingly new to me, and like the new gear for me, uh, is starting to play with paint. You know, we we worked with video art for many years and had the compositions, but you're working on a computer and you're making stuff on a computer. And there's just, there's something about art on a computer that's, you're not, your hands aren't in it. It's like your, your feet not being in the soil. So just taking my brush and t putting it on a, on a canvas, uh, that, it was just the greatest magic, and I had to overcome the fact that um, I have absolutely no, uh, you know, ability, and that, 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 and so I'll never be a painter. But that's not the same as not being an artist. Right. So there are two different, there there are two different distinctions. I'll never paint a beautiful landscape. It's not even, you know, and I have no intention. But I found that I can, you know. Lack of uh, facility is not necessarily a limitation, but I started playing with, with paint and I, I, I started doing this and I kind of knew what to do. And it was amazing. I, I never, uh, you know, I never questioned it, never doubted it, or I just started and I felt that I knew what to do. So I've been using paint to channel these stories. So you ordinarily with a story, you think it out, you plot it out, you, 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 you write it out, and then you, and then you go out and you produce it. And this is the whole backwards way where I'm like painting it out. I'm, you know, again, the, this, the piece that I'm doing now, which is the third, you know, I, I did, I started with the afternoon of a, or I started with a, a Rite of Spring with the Stravinsky right. and, and riffed on that. Then I started with Afternoon of a Fawn. And then my next piece is the Dance of the Little Bells, which is, an original piece, which is set in a in a near future. I've got a cast and crew that's of of spirits that I've that have evolved that are taking me into this next phase of this. And I've been writing the next story for a year just uh, by painting it out. And every time I go in there, I have I come in with some sort of plan, but I, it's very rarely what I do. And the and the and the piece gets revealed to me day by day as I go and I go, oh, I see who they are and I learn what they're doing and these people talk to me and I, I get into this animistic state and I'm, and the, you know, the, you know, out where my studio is, is a very animistic, it is. beautiful, natural place and I tune into that deep nature which I dearly hunger for and don't have shoes on and have my feet in dirt 
and wallow in that. And, you know, and again, I'll stop, like I, I told you, you know, I, I left town for a week and came back into my yeah. studio <laughs> and I walked in there and I go, I'm out of my mind, yeah. you know, because I, I look in there and I go, you know, this is really crazy. It's yeah, but Mark, there's a thin line between, <laughs> between the insanity and, and the genius of your work. And I'm not trying to flatter you, but, but you're walking, you're dancing down that line. <laughs> right uh, on that line. You're dancing right on that line. <laughs> Uh, and, but uh, I can I can say that to you as a friend. Yeah. Because the result and the outcome of all this is gonna is is gonna take care of itself. I had a, a friend, uh, a great artist friend, uh, by the name of Carlos Almaraz, uh, in Los Angeles, who's a very well known painter, who passed away. And he used to say, you know, what I look for in a painting is a piece that almost hangs together but is on the verge of falling yeah. completely apart. Right. He says. If I, if I can achieve that, that's a, that's a good painting. Right. And I, I, I like that. And in, in, in writing, what I'm looking for is something that makes you laugh, has humor, has an ounce of truth, but in the end will make you cry. You know, and so that's the, you know, that's a very, you know, so you're looking, you know, it, it, it's, it's an excuse to do the deeper search which I've been on for the last couple of years, and now these conversations are a way of uh, kind of coming up for air and talking to uh, my friends in conversations that I'd be having with, with, that, with, or, with or without the cameras. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be still having the same, I'm not trying to entertain an audience, you know, we're trying to right. make sure that we have these, these conversations down. And, uh, because we're all on a similar kind of journey. You know, we're really, I, I think, I mean, you both, you and I know time is finite. Right. It, it, it zips, uh, and it better be meaningful, and you better be, you know, cherishing it at a, at a deep level, always. You know, it's, it's going to well, be sacred. I, I admire your, your work ethic and your discipline in your work, and I've been able to, to witness that firsthand. Uh, uh, as your guest over the last week or so, and, uh, and and you're making very good use of your time in this project. Well, I appreciate that. I, I, I hope there's a, you know, it's a matter, if I do, you can't question it at a certain point because you're too far in. Right. So you right. better just get to the other side and then <laughs> yeah, we'll, right. we'll worry there. Yeah, how do we get out of this? So anyway, <laughs> I hope I can report to uh, my viewers that you made a great sale yeah, indeed. Sunday I night, hope. and this, uh, and we will continue this conversation for many years. I hope so. Bless you, man. <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> and that's uh, conversations and collaborations. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Conversations and Collaborations. For all episodes, go to markdavidbear.com. See it now. Don't wait. Mm -hmm.